Hi, I'm Bart Herbison, Executive Director of the Nashville Songwriters Association, and this week the story behind the song is T-R-O-U-B-L-E, the great Hall of Fame songwriter Jerry Chestnut, and we're both Elvis Presley fanatics. Let's talk about how the song got written in a few minutes. I want to know when you first heard Elvis Presley was going to record your song. Well, I got a call. He had played the demo. And uh, I got a call that uh, don't let nobody hear that. He said, Elvis said, it's, that's a rock single. It's my next single. He said, that's a rock standard. And, of course, it was. That's the first record that Elvis ever put out to where they used to put them out and the DJs would play the other side or either, it'd split, they'd play both of them. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing they ever shipped with trouble on both sides. Both sides, right. He didn't want to take a chance on it splitting with whatever's on. I don't even know what's on the other side, but. What about the first time you heard Elvis's version of it? I was in the studio and uh, they, uh, they were mixing it over at Little Victor. And they called me to come over and I went over. I, I probably shouldn't tell this, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I, I was a publisher also. I had published all these songs. And uh, it, we shipped to all the little stations that uh, the record labels would ship to all the big stations. You know, WKDA mm -hmm. and WJJD and all the big ones. And the little stations, they wouldn't ship a lot of times. And I'm thinking, man, we're going to have to ship every one of these things, and I've got to get it to these little stations. If they start playing it on the big stations first, then these DJs are going to be mad at me. And I'm thinking all this stuff that I've got to do as far as work on this thing and dreading it. Well, it was a and lot. Then all of a sudden, I thought, I've got an Elvis Presley single again. And he had done, you know, four or five of my songs already. And I thought, here I've got a single by him coming out. This is the greatest thing you could have happen. And I'm sitting here dreading it. It's time for me to get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever get to meet him? you know, him? anything you do, oh yeah, anything you do on, on this earth, uh, I don't care what it is. If you do it for a living and you do it every day, it just becomes work. Right, right. Somewhere tell me right about there. tell me about meeting Elvis. Uh, the first time I met Elvis, Lamar called me and said, "That's uh, Lamar Fike." Yeah, yeah, Lamar Fike. He and, and he said, uh, "We're going to a movie," and and I was in Memphis, and he said, uh, "Elvis wants you to go with us." And I said, "Well, where you want to meet me?" And so. I met him down at this studio, the Memphis Theater, I believe it was, and uh, the movie was uh, Charlie Varick, and uh, we watched that movie together, and he introduced me to Elvis, and uh, I don't know, being a songwriter and, and, and meeting Elvis, I thought I, it's like meeting Superman or something. Mm -hmm. And a lot of a lot of women will just almost lose their mind. They jump out of balconies. They go crazy, you know. And I thought, boy, this is really going to be something. And uh, he said, Elvis, this is Jerry Chestnut, Elvis Presley. He stuck out his hand. No. He said, how you doing? <laughs> to this day, I don't remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you, Jerry. But, well, right uh, here. This is kind of a sad story. It's great and it's sad. I think this is the last, from Elvis Presley, TCB necklace around your neck that he ever ordered. Yeah, he had that ordered and made up, and uh, I think Vernon put it on. Anyway, uh, and in about 30 days, he was gone. And you, you, he didn't get to put it on you, but that, that's one of the last ones ever. Now, about the song. Tell me about that idea and writing that song, T-R-O-U-B-L-E. Because you're writing like a lot say, of country stuff, and you, but you went on. rock and roll on this thing. Well, not necessarily. You know, if Bill Monroe had done it, it'd been bluegrass. Yeah, yeah. And, 
course, when once Elvis done it, it was rock. But uh, and he said it was a rock standard. And of course, then late ten years later, he did it in '75, and then Wayne Newton did it in '80, mm -hmm. and then in '92, Travis Tritt did it, and it's it's unbelievable. Travis that killed thing. that thing too. But anyway, uh, of course, he heard Elvis doing it. And he, he was a kid down there playing these little nightclubs mm -hmm. in Marietta, Georgia. And he just did his version of it, and he knew it. And you know if an artist, they're lazy. They don't like to learn 12 songs or 15 <laughs> to do a, a CD. So if they know something, it's not easy to get it on there. Yeah. And so he knew it, and so he put it on there, and the way it come off, man, they couldn't keep it. Well, how'd you write it? What how'd the, Where'd the idea come from? Well, I was running... Elvis, I mean, running uh, Little David Music's publishing company. I was running Billy Ed Wheeler's publishing company and mine and just anybody that had a publishing company and they didn't want to run it, they'd, they'd get me to run it. And uh, But anyway, David was recording for MCA. And the only thing that he had ever had country that played... David... Wilkins. Wilkins. Little David, right, 380 right. pounds. Right. And... Uh, he just kept bugging me, write me a hit, write me a hit. Well, I was on UA, and when I'd go to put out a record or record a record, I was getting the the leftovers, what nobody would cut. And so, naturally, I didn't have no hits and didn't really want to. I resigned from the label, which nobody had ever done before. Like, I was on Hee Haw, I resigned from that, because it got in the way of the writing. You can't right. do a dozen things. But... Uh, David just kept bugging me, write me a hit, write me a hit. And uh, David was playing Ireland record, I mean Ireland restaurant. It was steak and biscuits, and they had a bar set up. And David would go over there and play from nine to one, play that piano. And he's like Jerry Lee, man, he's wild and great. And we'd go over there and, and, uh, and eat, have a few drinks, and listen to David. And uh, I had watched David do this for a long time. And anyway, one morning I decided to write a song for David. And I thought, well, what would I write for David that he could really do? And I thought it needs to be up tempo because he, man, he could get out there and rock. And uh, it needs to be up tempo or something. And let's see. And uh, he'll probably play it at that place. And he, he plays from nine to one. And. So I thought, well, I'll just write it about him. I won't mention his name, so I play an old piano. Now, Travis changed it to a guitar. No, Wayne Newton mm -hmm. changed it to a guitar. And then Travis did it with, I play an old guitar. But I started out, I play an old piano from 9 till half past 1, which is 1.30. I'm trying to make a living just watching everybody else having fun. And then I'd played so many skull orchards myself and seen a good-looking woman walk in by herself, it's trouble. <laughs> so I thought of that, and I thought, well, I'll put that in there. I'll let this girl walk in, and that's trouble. And I went ahead and, and, and wrote this thing. It just kind of fell in place. And then I realized something that I've, ne I've never known and uh, had never thought about, and I bet you've never thought about it. If you go to write down Bart, you can't write it without in your brain saying B A R T. Mm hmm. Wow. It's the only way you can write it. Yeah. Well, I got to realizing that I'm sitting here saying, Hello, T R O U B L E. What in the world are you doing? A L O N E. Hey, G-O-O-D-L-O-K-I-N-G, -O -O I smell T-R-O. I thought, not the word ever letter is rhyming. It was. Wow. That was meant to be. I don't know. And everybody's asked me, how in the world did you do that? And I said, I don't know. It just happened. That's the way it was. Everything. Hey, good L-O-O-K-I-N-G, I smell T-R-O-U-B-L-E. And it just, everything in the whole song, and it just... It just come to come together, and and uh, so I went in and demoed it, and the demo came off so good that I knew it was a hit. In fact, uh, Elvis has got a book out a lot of people won't know about, 
probably. It's very expensive. It's $150 in England, $150 in Australia, and at Graceland, I think it's $75. It's called Riding for the King. It starts with May Axton and goes mm -hmm. in line. And this demo of mine is so good that they've got a CD in the back of that book of my demo. In fact, this past week they played Jim uh, that that runs the, Jim the Sykes. other show. Yeah, Big Jim. Big Jim called me, and and we talked a while on there. And you know, uh, Jim and I started in radio together in Paris, Tennessee. Is that right? yeah, we've known each other. He's for a years. great guy. Great guy. Anyway, I, uh, GK. George Klein always calls me mm -hmm. once or twice a month, and, and we talk on the air. But uh, Jim called last week, right in the middle of the week, and that never happened before. And we talked about that song and some stuff, and then he said, uh, he was talking about my demo and how good it was, and he said, in fact, when I, in, when, when I call you to do GK's show this coming Friday, what I'm going to do is uh, we'll play that. Play the demo. And they never play nobody else. Yeah, I Elvis know Elvis on, on that. It's all they Elvis 24 about hours it, but a day. They won't play it, but they did. They played well, it on there. That's a fantastic story, and we are so privileged to hear it. One of the great songs. So many artists have recorded it. So this week, the story behind the song for the Tennessean and Tennessean.com. You got to spell it out T R O U B L E, and Hall of Fame songwriter Jerry Chestnut. 